That's your name, Jesus. Glory to God in the highest. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord from whom all blessings flow. Hallelujah. God, we worship you. We lift you up, King Jesus. You reign, O oh God, in power, dominion, and authority. Have your God like way in us, O oh God, today. Thank you, Lord God, for your goodness and mercy. Thank you, Lord God, that we are loved of God, that we ought to love one another. Thank you, Lord God, for the spirit of worship that draws us into a place of intimacy with you, Lord God. Thank you, Lord God, for the spirit of prayer, oh God, for the Lord has set apart him that is godly for himself. The Lord will hear when I call unto him. God, I thank you this evening, God, for your presence and I missed, oh God, I thank you for your glory revealed in our lives every day, oh God, to reveal your person of the God here to us, Father, because we've come to know you as Lord and Savior. Thank you for your strength and your power and weaknesses, God. Thank you for the word of God. Evening and morning and at noon will I pray and cry aloud. He shall hear my voice. God, I thank you that you hear us and we call upon you in faith, O oh God, to hear and answer. Give ear to my words, O oh Lord. Consider my meditations. Hearken unto the voice of my cry, my King and my God. For unto thee will I pray, my voice shall thou hear in the morning. O oh Lord, in the morning will I direct my prayer unto thee and will look up. God, I thank you, O oh God, that we're able to come before your presence with thanksgiving, to your courts with praise. I thank you, Lord God, that he that turns away his ear from hearing the law, even his prayer shall be an abomination. God, I thank you with my soul have I desired thee in the night. Yea, with my spirit within me will I seek thee early. For when thy, for when thy judgments are in the earth, the inhabitants of the world will learn righteousness. God, I thank you and I praise you, Lord God, for the spirit of truth today, O oh God, for your presence to well and I miss. I thank you, Lord God, for being sovereign and holy, Lord God. You say your words, seek the Lord while you may be found. Call upon him while yet near. And God, we come before you, God, just declaring how holy you are and righteous you are, God. That we have the right and the privilege to come before you, God, to give you glory, God. Have your way today, O oh God. Break the chains and the shackles, God, off our minds and our hearts. Saturate in your anointing, God. Empower us by your spirit today, O oh God. Help us, O oh God, to draw near to you. You draw nigh to us, O oh God. That you perfect praise, O oh God, in our hearts. I thank you, Lord God. It shall come to pass that therefore they call, before they call, I will answer. And while they're yet speaking, I will hear. Father, what a mighty covenant we have with you, God, that you hear before we even utter a word from our mouth, O oh God. We seek the Lord while you may be found and call upon you while you're yet near, God. We thank you. We praise you, Lord God, that while we're calling, God, you hear and answer according to your will, God. Your word tells us rejoice in hope, patience in tribulation, continue in instant prayer. Teach us how to be devoted to prayer. Teach us how to surrender our hearts to you, God. Teach us how to love on you, Lord God, and love on one another as Christ loved the church. In the name of Jesus, you said rejoice, Father. Help us to have a joyful heart. Take away the bitterness. Take away resentment. Take away hatred. Take away anxiety, God. Take away stressful moments, God. Give us the power and the ability to stand fast and the liberty Christ made us free that you would be glorified in our hearts, O oh God. God, we honor you today, O oh God, because this is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. God, we thank you for your presence, God, dwelling in our midst, O oh God, in the name of Jesus. <coughs> be glorified, O oh God, today. Help us, Father, in our unbelief, O oh God. Purge and saturate your anointing, God. Give us strength, O oh God, to stand fast on the word of the Lord. In the name of Jesus, we thank you, Lord, God. your word says, Pray always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplications for all saints. Help us to intercede in behalf of one another, God, to pray, pray, pray until something happens, God. Pray and pray and pray and watch God change things. Help us have a mind of faith, O oh God, and the heart of faith to believe and trust that your word, that your word will surely come to pass, God. I thank you that this is the victory overcomes the world, even our faith, O oh God, as your word tells us, beloved, 
But ye beloved, building up yourselves on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. Teach us how to pray in the Holy Ghost, that you would be exalted in our lives, O oh God, that as we learn how to die to self, O oh God, and live in your righteousness and your truth. Be glorified, O oh God. Be lifted up in the midst of the O oh God, that no weapon formed against us will prosper. I lift up every person who needs healing this evening, God. Every person is going through storms of life and tribulations, Father, in their flesh, O oh God. Whatever they're going through, Father, you give them the strength to stand fast and the liberty of Christ made them free. Lead God and direct them, strengthen God, empower them by your spirit to move forward, God, in their purpose and their calling, that you would be lifted up, O oh God. In the name of Jesus, we thank you, O oh God, that this is the day the Lord has made. We can rejoice and be glad in it, Father. Break the prideful hearts, O oh God. Break us, Father God, that we will humble ourselves before the mighty hand of God, that you would be lifted up in our lives, O oh God. So only by pride comes contention, but with the well, advice is wisdom. With the well, advice is wisdom. And we thank you, Lord, we receive godly wisdom tonight, O oh God, from your word, to be instructed, to be counseled, to be guided by your truth, O oh God that you would be lifted up in our lives. And I thank you and I pray to God. Father, as you teach us tonight, Father, let us have ears to hear what the Spirit says to the church, that you would be lifted up in our lives and we will humble ourselves daily of God to walk in your purpose, your will, your plan you have for our lives. And I thank you, O oh God, in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Again, to God be the glory. To God be praised. Hallelujah on this Tuesday evening. I thank you for tuning in tonight. I pray that you find uh, wisdom and knowledge from the Word of God tonight that will instruct, counsel, and guide you in your pathway, in your walk with the Lord. That no matter what you go through in this life, that you will stand fast in the liberty of Christ made you free. For truly, it is, it is about God being glorified in our lives. No matter what we go through on today, we got to learn how to put our trust in the Lord and keep leaning and confidently resting in his victory that's already been provided for us. Amen. To God be the glory. Tonight, I want to open up with a devotion. Open the devotion. Open your hands and your hearts to receive this day as precious gift from me. Open your, your hands and your hearts to receive this day as a precious gift from me. I began each day with a sunrise, announcing my radiance presence. By the time you rise from your bed, I have already prepared you, prepared the way before you. I eagerly await your first conscious thought. I rejoice when you glance my way. Bring me the gifts of thanksgiving, which opens your heart to rich communion with me. Because I am God from whom all blessings flow. Thankfulness is the best way to draw near to me. Glory to God. Sing praise songs to me. Tell me of my wondrous works. Remember that I take great delight in you. I rejoice over you with singing. Zephaniah 3 and verse 17. Zephaniah chapter 3 verse 17. Psalms 118 verse 24. Psalms 95 verse 2. I some reference scriptures to this devotion from Jesus Calling. Jesus Calling. It's a great book to get and add to your library. I pray that you get this book and be enriched by the Spirit of the living God. Amen. Glory to God. So let's move on further tonight. I hope you're staying cool on this hot, sunny day because it's definitely hot outside today. Even hot on the inside. A lot of our air conditioners done stopped functioning in our building where I live at. So a lot of us are without air right now. So today, thank God for a manager, manager that cares and a, a director that cares who went and brought fans for everybody in the building that everybody can have a fan to use on this hot, sunny day. It provides a little bit of coolness for us, even though it's hot in here and circling the hot air, but it's better than having nothing at all. Amen. So we're going back to our book again. Breaking the threefold demonic cord of Jezebel. We're going back to our book. I pray that you are being enriched in your spirit tonight. And that you're ready to hear what God has to speak to our hearts tonight. To strengthen, to encourage, to edify us in our faith. To stand fast in the liberty of Christ made us free. 
So we're going to continue to learn more. We're almost done with Chapter 4. We'll be going to Chapter 5 next. If we don't get through it tonight, we'll start next week. Amen? So stay encouraged. Keep on studying. If you got the book, if you don't have the book, you can get the, listen to the book even on YouTube. They have it on YouTube by the same author, uh, Bill Hammond. So you can get this book in an audio version. You can buy the physical book or the Kindle book. So get this book at your library. I guarantee it will set you free when you start really paying attention to the details in the book and the revelation that God speaks to us from his word. Amen. Because the word lines with this book very well. I was looking at something tonight, and I'm, I'm going to read this before we get into our lesson tonight. And um, it's really inspirational. It, it talks about what is the Jezebel spirit and what are the characteristics, okay? It says, what is the Jezebel spirit? And it starts up with a story. It says, a seasoned pastor took me, a new pastor, out to lunch. At one point in the, the conversation turned to some of the more difficult things he had experienced in his years of ministry. He told me about one lady who was incredibly, incredibly dif difficult for his ministry. As he shared all the troubles she caused with the church, he summed it up all by saying she had a Jezebel spirit. Right or wrong, I just started calling her Jezebel, at least under my breath. Then he says, I'll be honest, I heard of Jezebel from the Bible, but I wasn't entirely sure of what, what he meant by Jezebel spirit. It had been about 10 years or so that I heard that phrase, but it seems I'm hearing this phrase frequently these days. What is a Jezebel spirit? Is that phrase even in the Bible? Is it something we should be concerned with? Jezebel is mentioned in the Bible. The first appearance of Jezebel is in 1 Kings chapter 16. The wicked king Ahab married her in order to assist him in leading Israel into Baal worship. She was cunning and spiritually controlling. We see this play in 1 Kings chapter 18 when she ordered the death of all the prophets of the Lord. She wanted to silence their voices and replace them with altars to Baal. She kept pursuing Elijah the prophet and later battled later had battles with Elisha. Her wickedness is also on display in 1 Kings chapter 21 in the death of Naboth. Ahab wanted to buy a vineyard from Naboth, but Naboth refused to sell it to him. He believed doing so would be going against the Lord. Ahab sulted to his queen, but she seemed confined to his, posi he, but seemed confined to his position of not having this vineyard. Jezebel would not take no for answer. She plotted and schemed and had neighbors killed, and they took his vineyard. She died when taunting Eli Elisha, when she was thrown from a window and trampled by a horse, and they wanted to recover her body to give her a queen's burial, but most of the body had been eaten by dogs. Not, not a very pleasant end, but her death was fulfillment was a fulfillment of Elijah's prophecy against her. Remember the prophecy Elijah spoke in first second Kings chapter nine verse thirty seven? It says, In the territory of Jezreel, the dogs would eat the flesh of Jezebel, and the corpse of Jezebel would be as dung on the face of the field in this territory of Jezreel. So that no one can say, This is Jezebel. And that's what God does when we defy him, he brings punishment on your enemies. When he speaks a word he, he backs up his word. He doesn't change his mind about his word. Listen to this. Yet the, the, it doesn't appear to be the end of Jezebel, not entirely. The name makes another appearance in Revelation. Listen to this. Revelation chapter 2, verse 19 to 25. Revelation chapter 2, verse 19 to 25. I know your deeds, your, your love and faith, your service and perseverance, and that you are now doing more than you did at first. Nevertheless, I have this against you. You tolerate that, that woman Jezebel who calls herself a prophet by her teachings. She misleads my servant into sexual immorality, eating of foods offered to sacrifice to idols. I had given her time to repent of her immorality, but she was unwilling. 
So I will cast her on a bed of suffering, and I will make it. I will make those who commit adultery with her suffer intensely, unless they repent of her ways. I will strike her children dead. Then all the churches would know that I am He who searches the hearts and minds. Now will repay each according to your deeds. Now I say to the rest of you in Thyatira, to you who do not hold to her teachings and have not learned Satan's so-called deep secrets, I will not impose any of her other burdens on you except to hold you to what you have until I come. And that was a judgment God deemed against the church, against one of the church's revelations. And I guarantee when you are out of order with God, God is not playing with us, I tell you. When he speak a word, that word will surely come to pass. If you're not paying attention when God begin to speak and repent of your sinful ways, you will find yourself falling <clears throat> into the judgment of God. And God will allow his word to manifest and allow the enemy to overpower you and destroy you. Like he did, the, he talked to the church at Thy Tower and, and warned them of what, what sin they have allowed in their church and that the judgment that was coming upon them if they didn't repent. Just like Jezebel. Many people today are just like the spirit of Jezebel, refuse to repent. Even though God provides opportunity after opportunity to repent, they refuse to repent of their wicked ways. Listen to this. To what does Jezebel in Revelation chapter 2, verse 8 to 25, refer to? Listen to this. This is really good. It says, first, is, is this is the real name of, a, of Jezebel? Is this the real name of Jezebel? It is unlikely that any anyone in the Jewish circle would have a, their name would have named their daughter Je, uh, Jezebel, though it's plausible. Yet the phrase, phrase the phrasing here would indicate that is more symbolic. That the text literally says, "Your woman or wife Jezebel." This has caused some to speculate that an offending Jezebel is a pastor, bishop, or elder's wife. Again, this is semantically. Sem Applaudable, but not likely. The most likely reading is, is that there is an influential prophetess in Thyatira who is leading others astray, much as Jezebel led both Ahab and others astray in 1 Kings. Though it, also, though it may also be an entire, entire group of people who exemplifies this evil woman in the Old Testament. Second, we must look at how she gained influence. The text tells us tells us that she calls herself a prophetess. She is teaching and seducing service. And I appreciate the work of Sam Storm here. He, are, he has argued rather effectively that it is though parodying real prophecy that has, she has gained a foothold within the local church. Rather than being energized by the Holy Spirit, she is energized by a demonic spirit. This is how Storm says it. Then it goes on. He says, Storm says, let let me be brief and simply and say the word, the word spirit it is used here in two ways, either of a human spirit, perhaps an attitude, a disposition, a habit, or a set of characteristic displays by a particular individual, or by whose supernatural prophetic ability to energize by a demonic spirit. Ain't that something? Because you have the spirit of human beings, you have the spirit of the enemy, but you also have the spirit of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit of God, who dwells in the believer. So we are influenced every day by a spirit. Either we're going to submit to the Spirit of God or be submitted to the spirit of the enemy, a demonic spirit. Whatever spirit you subject yourself to, it's the same spirit that's going to dominate and control you. So you got to be careful who speaks into your ear gate. I always talk about the ear gate because the ear gate is the access point that the enemy uses to get into the mindset. It's a gateway. You have a gateway into demonic forces in your mindset through your ears because what you hear gets into your spirit. Just like you listen to certain types of music. Some music is operated by demonic spirits. It will entice you into the spirit of lust and adultery and fornication because it draws you to a dark place out of the will of God. And if you're not paying attention and prayed up, you'll easily find yourself a prey or victim to the enemy. Listen to this. So in either case, regardless of animating force, a person with a Jezebel spirit 
is one who displays insidiously manipulative and evil tendencies manifest in this woman of Thyatira. So we have to really be aware and be discerning of the spirits you entertain. Next, we should consider the core of her teaching and its fruits. The text tells us that Jezebel is encouraging others to practice, listen to this, practice sexual immorality and to eat food sacrificed to idols. What does this mean? It's helpful to think about the first Jezebel. She encouraged the Israelites to compromise. How many times you came about and across people in your life who compromised their belief in God and tried to entice you to follow them away from the Lord? Because they were compromising, they were being manipulative, they were being controlled by the mind spirit. They want you to be subjected to the same spirit. So you have to be careful. So she encouraged the Israelites to compromise and prostitute themselves spiritually by worshiping Baal. We were just talking about last week about confronting the Jezebel spirit. In order to confront the Jezebel spirit, as we've been teaching the last several months, you have to understand what their spirit is and what it does and how it influences you as a child of God. If you're not careful and not paying attention, that spirit comes in subtly through other avenues, televisions, radio, people, churches, leadership. It comes in a subtle way in your life to control you. And it will eventually kill your spirit because it kills the anointing in your life. The enemy doesn't care about you. He cares about your anointing. If he can take away your anointing, he can take away your power. Take away your power, take away your joy. Take away your joy, he'll cause you to commit spiritual suicide. And that's what the enemy is trying to do as a child of God is get you a place where you commit spiritual suicide and stop following the Lord. It seems that something similar is happening here. The eating food sacrificed to idols is a participation in idolatrous aspect the world of the world which they live. So in other words, you're enticed by the world's influences. So to eat the foods offered as idols is to eat the things the world offers you. How it influences you, how it controls your thought life, how it gets you to a place to become a victim and not victor. Last we see, she refused to repent. This stubborn refusal of repentance is also the characteristic of a Jezebel spirit from the Old Testament. <coughs> Excuse me. The characteristics one of them is stubbornness, another is pride, another haughtiness, rebellion, because these are controlled and manipulated by the enemy in any person who shut their ear gate to hearing God's voice, like putting in spiritual earplugs, that you cannot hear God's voice because you refuse to obey God and stop sinning and stop doing the things you're doing that God is not pleased with. And God is trying to get you to pay attention so you put blinders on your eyes so you're not focused. So you lose your focus, you lose your hearing to become a spiritual mute. You can't even speak God no more. Because you ain't got stuck in a dark place where the enemy has put a death structure in your mind and caused your heart to become callous. That's a hardened heart. A heart that's impenetrable. Anything that's callous is like a rock. A rock cannot easily be broken. And that's the way some people are in the body of Christ. Their hearts are so hardened, they refuse to repent and stop doing what they're doing that God's not pleased with. This stubborn refusal of repentance is also the characteristic of Jezebel from the Old Testament because of her refusal to repent, her end. That of all those who follow her is death and destruction. 
The word tells us there's a way that seems right unto a man. But the end thereof is death. Because God is not playing with the church. He's calling us out of our dark places, our sinful lives, to come to repentance, to seek his face, turn from our wicked ways. They will hear from heaven, forgive our sin, our, our sin and heal our land. God cannot heal your land. Your land might be your finances. Bankrupt. Because you refuse to give God the 10% he asked you to give him. As a sacrifice. Your land might be your health because you refuse to stop sinning and God allowed affliction come upon you. Some people, affliction is attached to a spirit because of the mindset of death is in their minds. And God says the more you rebel, become callous and stubborn, you allow yourself to be a victim of the enemy and he controls your destiny so clearly we don't want to follow after this Jezebel then what are the characteristics of a Jezebel spirit listen to this so personally I believe we should be cautious into jumping into conclusions that the specific demonic spirit some have concluded that this Jezebel spirit is one of the most dangerous in the church today. Others consider the demonic spirit of Jezebel to be one of the archangels of the demonic realm. None of these conclusions can be derived explicitly from the text of the scripture. Ironically, by making too fine a point on this, one might be guilty of claiming prophetic speech and special knowledge, thus embodying the spirit of Jezebel. In my estimation, it is far better to view this spirit of Jezebel as a sketch of a specific character traits which can be deadly to the local body. This spirit can kill your church because once it has infected certain individuals, it begins to spread like wildfire, even get to the leadership in that church and bring destruction. Can this be energized by demonic spirit? Certainly. But we're, so we're on a far safer ground to speak as the scriptures speak and use the tools which are given to us in God's word. You got to study your word. You got to know the word of God. Get the word in you. Speak the word of God over your life, over your health, over your finance, over your mental capacity. Speak the word over your destiny and your future. Speak the word of God. So having said that, what is the picture which the scripture paints of Jezebel? I see five defining characters of the Jezebel spirit. Using spiritual influence to manipulate or control others. Sexual immorality, though that could be symbolic of a spiritual apostasy. That means abandoning your faith. Idolatrous, idolatrous leading others away from the authentic faith in Christ. The enemy does that when he can make you doubt God's word to when you start having faith in the negative and not the positive things about God. So all you hear is the gloom and doom about God and you believe that and don't believe in the goodness and favor of God and the love of God for you. False teaching, inciting fear and discouragement in others. As in 1 Kings, when someone acts as Jezebel did, exemplifying these characteristics, we might say they have a Jezebel spirit those who mirror spiritual gifts but are energized by an unchrist life aims will always be deadly to the individuals and communities didn't we talk about how the enemy he wants to get into the place of regions and communities because he can get the regions he can get the nations get the nations he gets communities because he knows if he can get in any kind of way, 
He can influence God's people to lose their faith in God and rebel against God. Likewise, false teachings, which they are tolerating in Thyatira, would have a devastating consequence. We do, we do well to, know, to reject Jezebel. We do well to reject Jezebel's spirit. So we got to rebuke that spirit. Let go of that spirit. Because that spirit is one that will bring death to you. It brings destruction to you. It will kill you. It stops you walking in your purpose and God's word. That's what Amy wants to do is get you to a place where you start doubting God's word. Doubting God's ability to keep you and to carry you in his will. Amen. So we're going to get into our lesson tonight. We, we talked about confronting Jezebel last week. Tonight we're going to talk about confronting those who influence Jezebel. Confronting those influenced by Jezebel. So I'm going to post this link on if you want to check this study out any, any further that I just talked about. It's really good. I pray that you really take take the time out to get this and read this because it really is an eye-opening to help you see what God has for you in his word concerning the spirit of Jezebel. Y'all pray for me. It's so hot in here. Oh, my God. I'm starting to sweat. Amen. Thank you all for tuning in tonight. <clears throat> Amen. I don't know who I'm on here right now, but thank you for tuning in. God bless you. I pray this is enriching to your spirit tonight to encourage you. Did God care about Jezebel? Did God care about Jezebel? Do you believe God cared about Jezebel? God knew the heart of Jezebel. He knows our heart. He knows when we're going to turn to him, we're going to trust him, repent. He knows when we're going to give our lives to serve him and follow him. He cared about Jezebel because Jezebel was just like any other person, a human being. And God cares about his creation. In fact, he gave her many opportunities to repent. God gives us many opportunities to repent. When we know we're doing things God has not approved of in our lives, he gives us chance after chance after chance after chance after chance to repent. Some people would never ever repent of their sinful life. Because they become comfortable. They became complacent in the things they're doing and refuse to turn away from their sinful ways. In fact, he gave her many opportunities to repent, but she never repented or turned from her immoralities. Does God care about those operating under Jezebel's evil influence today? Once again, absolutely. I agree with that. Because the sinner man in the street, the drug addict, the prostitute, the pimps, the liars, the thieves, the hormones, the adulterers, God still care. Because the word, the word tells us he wished that none would perish. But all would come to repentance. That's an indication that God cares. So if he cares, he's looking for a repentful heart. Are you willing to give your heart to follow him? Are you going to continue to rebel against him? Once again, absolutely. He is raising up believers and deliverance ministries to pray for those who are deceived by this evil spirit. There are so many churches have risen up in these last decades. And yet, there are many people still need the Lord. But one thing about Jesus Christ his return is not going to happen until the gospel has been preached all around the world. And if you don't receive the word of God, that's up to you. 
and it's your fault. Because there are so many different avenues out here where the gospel is being preached and being displayed. Even on billboards, the word is being, being displayed. So we are without excuse who say, I never heard of this Jesus. I've never been to church before. There's somewhere, some way you're going to hear something about God. But if you don't choose to repent, God holds you accountable. God told Jeremiah chapter 17, verse 11, I believe it is, so the heart of man is desperately wicked. Who can know it save the Lord? Who will render to every man according to the fruit of his doing? The judgment. He's talking about the judgment. God says our hearts are filthy, they're wicked, it's prone to do evil without Jesus Christ. But once I receive Jesus Christ in my heart, and I repent of my sins and turn from my wicked ways, I receive salvation. Once I receive salvation, I receive deliverance. Once I receive deliverance, I receive healing. I receive victory. I have faith overcome any obstacle, any trial, any test that comes in my life through the power of the Lord Jesus Christ, through the Holy Spirit. Amen? Before confronting this Jezebel spirit, listen to this. I just lost my place. Give me one second. Okay, let me jump in. Some of you who are reading this book may find the need to confront someone influenced by Jezebel. Let's discuss some effective ways to confront others oppressed by this stronghold. How many times have you Find yourself trying to tell somebody about a spirit they have upon them. And you try to persuade them to hear you, convince them to hear you, and they become argumental because they're not ready to, to turn from what they're doing. They know they're unclean and refuse to repent, so they argue with you. And the more they argue, they start making you irritated. And when you get irritated, you get loud and sometimes boisterous and then become confrontational and ready to fight. Because that's the enemy in that individual knows what button to push to pull you out of character. We have to learn how to have our conversation seasoned with salt and grace. To where even if a person is trying to be argumental, I know when to be quiet. There's a time to speak and a time to be silent. And when the time comes to be silent, you know it's the Holy Spirit. Because once you're silent, the Holy Spirit will speak to you and give you a strategic way to speak the Word of God again to the individual where their hearts become pliable to receive that Word. And they have ears to hear what you're saying to them. First of all, never counsel or confront alone a person who operates under the influence of any seducing spirit. That's the reason Jesus sent the disciples out two by two. When he commissioned them to go preach the gospel to the whole world, he sent them out two by two. So he know that one would not be able to do it by themselves. But they need another person there to bend together in the spirit of God with strength and power to oppose seducing spirits. The word tells the one can put a thousand in flight, two can send the legion flee, or ten thousand. And God knows that when we come together, we're stronger together than divided. The spirit will manipulate and control to the point that the counselor becomes confused and disoriented. That's how powerful the spirit is. If you have not been prayed up, been consecrated, spending time in the presence of God, studying the word of God, do not ever try to confront a Jezebel spirit, a seducing spirit by yourself. Because when you do, I said it before, that spirit going to get on you. And that spirit going to get in your mind and cause you become confused yourself. Even suicidal. 
in particular, and I heard this from um, Steve, the one that passed on his Steve, what is his name? At a Brownfield church. I forgot the last name. Steve, Steve Hill. Pastor Steve Hill. From Brownfield Church out of Florida. He made this statement. A male should never confront a female alone. And the reason why, if you try to counsel a woman by yourself as a man of God, the spirit in that individual can try to entice you and pull you out of your character into the spirit of a lustful thought. Secondly, that unclean spirit will try to jump on you that they're dealing with. And thirdly, that spirit will control you if you're not strong enough to resist it. I do not recommend this in any situation. A female Jezebel has tendencies to be seductive. Let me repeat, no male pastor or male leader should ever counsel a woman with a Jezebel's tendencies without additional counselors in the setting. So if you're going to counsel a woman as a man of God, you need to have a witness with another man of God. Not a woman of God, a man of God. And a female, and vice versa. If you're trying to counsel a man of God, you need to have another woman with you to counsel that man. Because you don't want to give no foothold to the enemy to come in in any subtle way to bring disruption and disorder in your conversation. So if anything is said, you have a witness to confirm what you say and what they say. Secondly, <coughs> excuse me, pray before you counsel and ask intercessors to pray during your confrontation. You hear that? Never counsel a person alone. Secondly, pray and have intercessors backing you up. We have a team of intercessors praying before every confrontation and if possible during the session. If confronting a family, find someone in the spiritual authority who can cover you in prayer during the confrontation so that the enemy has no place to interfere and cause confusion. You know, I, I remember I mentioned this before a while, a while ago that a friend of mine asked me to go to a person's house who was having demonic activity in that house. We were having doors slammed and hearing voices, stuff fall off the wall, having demonic activity. And he asked me to go with him. And during this same time, I was going through consecration. So we went over there together to the person who confronted the family. It was a woman. She didn't have no husband. So the single parent with three children. And they had a cousin over there at the same time. So we went over there to the house. And the Holy Spirit told me, first of all, ask them, are they believers in Jesus Christ? And they all said, yes, they were born-again believers. And I said, we need to come together right now. I'm going to anoint each one of you with oil and pray over you. As I was instructed by the Holy Spirit, I laid hands on each one of them and prayed for them and rebuked the spirit of the enemy that tried to bring destruction in their minds and their hearts. And I spoke peace in the atmosphere and commanded every evil spirit to leave that house. Then I went from room to room, window to window, door to door, even the garage, and the garage door. Laid hands on every area of the house and began to dispatch the angels of the Lord to stand at guard on the doorpost. Where any access point, enemy tried to come in to infiltrate their structure would be bombarded by the blood of Jesus. Guess what? A couple of days later, the lady called me and said, Pastor Emery, I want to thank you for coming over to my house. 
Because every night we have that same activity take place in our home. Somebody brought a spirit in our home. And when you came in here, that spirit left. So my house has been at peace from that day. I tell you, when you walk in obedience, in a consecrated life, God releases a supernatural anointing upon your life, the power of God to flow through you, to go against every unclean spirit that you encounter, even in your life. Thirdly, ask for divine revelation concerning strongholds. If you try to come against any unclean spirit, ask God to give you understanding and discernment. And what spirit are you dealing with? It might be a spirit of lust. It might be a spirit of death. A spirit of confusion. A whoremongering spirit. A lying spirit. A deceptive spirit. A manipulative spirit. A confusing spirit. There are so many spirits that we come across as a child of God. And we have to understand and know what spirit am I de dealing with and how to identify it. Because you have to know what you're praying for. I cannot pray the spirit of lust over somebody who don't have the spirit of lust. They may have the spirit of confusion. I cannot pray the spirit of confusion of a person who might have the spirit of depression and don't have the spirit of confusion. That's the reason why we have to pray for divine revelation and understanding and discernment. Many times I ask God for dreams concerning the person I counsel. Since Jezebel is linked strongly with an occultic spirit, she attempts to keep a great deal hidden. That's another point that God showed me today. I read this many times before. But one thing about this spirit, it loves to conceal your sin. It loves to conceal what spirit it is influencing your life. But it operates in your life. And it keeps you blinded from recognizing what spirit it is. So you would not cast it out. I remember the story Jesus told when he came across the seashore to Bethany. I think it was Beth, Beth, Beth Age. That's what it was. And there was a man who dwelt among the tombs. And he came close to the man, and the man ran to him, recognized who he was, and said, Jesus, thou son of David, have thou come to torment before my time? Because the Spirit recognized who you are. But do you know who you are? And Jesus said, be quiet. What is your name? And the demon spoke out and said, my name is Legion, because we are many. So this man had over 2,000 demons inhabiting his mindset. He was in a state of confusion where he often threw himself in the fire, cut himself with stones, trying to kill himself, and could not die. And Jesus said, come out of him. And the man dropped to the ground as dead. But when he got up, he was naked, he was cut with stones, he, was, he, was, he saw himself the way he was, but Jesus restored him. And it says he was closed when he got up. Ain't that something? Jesus did a miracle, not only set him free mentally, but closed him physically. We have to recognize what spirit we are in, in, inhabiting in our lives. Who is trying to influence you? Who is trying to control you? Who is trying to deceive you? Who is trying to drive you? God is faithful to reveal hidden strategies of the enemy so that I can counsel by the Holy Spirit and see that the person is set free. 
The Holy Spirit knows how to reach the heart that's bound and in captivity. He knows exactly what to say, when to say, and what to do. Number four, keep a journal of every counseling session, including information received from the other counselors and leaders. I write notes on my tablet a lot because I like to remi remind myself of certain things that I hear in what people say. You have to pay attention and write down sometimes what God speaks to you. So you can go back and reference again when you need it. Sometimes we write down things, we forget about it until we need it. And God also says, go look in your notes. And you go back to your notes, you find something you wrote 10 years ago. But yet it's powerful as if you just wrote it today. You will find a pattern of behavior and a common thread that will empower you as you confront the spirit's evil influence. Ain't that something? God knows exactly what to give you according to his word. But it's up to you to really pay attention and know what God is speaking to you. Tell the person. Matter of fact, finally for a pastor or counselors in particular, I advise you to tape record the counseling sessions if possible. Tell the person that you're doing this for his or her protection and yours. The enemy has a way of twisting words that are spoken, especially after a session. And that's a good thing to pay attention to. Sometimes record conversations. Because sometimes people will say things and then say they didn't say it. Or you say something, didn't remember you said it to an individual, but you did. So sometimes we have to record our own conversations to be mindful of what you have spoken. Points to consider in confronting Jezebel. Number one, don't be afraid of Jezebel. The Lord has, not, has given us a spirit. You can read that again. The Lord has given you the scriptures with a powerful punch. God has given us a spirit to overcome the unclean spirit. The scripture gives us a powerful punch. Ye yeah, are God, little children, have overcome them. Overcome what? The unclean spirits. Because greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. 1 John 4, 4. Did you see how big God is? Spend some time with him today. Allow him to show you his majesty and might. Study the lives of Abraham, Joseph, Joshua, and Caleb. Examine how God proved his power to lead, deliver, and encourage them. He desires to do the same for you. God wants to encourage you. He wants to empower you. He wants to strengthen you. He wants to guide you. He wants to lead you. He wants to direct you. He wants to give you the ability to look into the spirit, see what God is doing in your life, in the lives of others around you. Write down your thoughts concerning God's ability to strengthen your faith. Sometimes you got to write down some things about your thoughts that you're thinking about. Even how God brought you to certain trials, certain things you overcame that you didn't think you would get out of. But God brought you out by his mighty hand and gave you the victory. Second, the Lord says no weapon Satan uses against us will prosper. And he says he will silence the tongue of your enemy. Isaiah chapter 54 verse 17. No weapon formed against me will prosper. Every tongue rise against me in judgment thou shalt condemn. For this is the heritage of them, the saints that are in the Lord. This is what God promises us. That no weapon, no strategy, no device, the enemy try to use the plot and plan against your demise would not prevail against you. What weapons has the enemy recently hurled towards you? False accusations, sickness and disease, fear and intimidation, 
These are weapons that Jezebel use against God's chosen. List Satan's weapons used against you. Now write the passage in the scripture that negates every weapon they use against you. So when you write down the weapons you know that Satan used against you, find a scripture to line up with that, that weapon and fight against it in the spirit. Denounce certain things that you gave into, certain spirits that controlled your life, certain influences that have led you astray. If you're battling fear, for example, then write 2 Timothy 1 17. God's not given spirit of fear, but power, love, and a sound mind. Then begin to declare God's word against the enemy. You hear that? Declare God's word against the enemy. Submit yourself. Number three, to the hand of God and ask for his empowerment to confront the Jezebel stronghold influencing your life. Tell the Lord you desire all that he has for you. Ask the Lord to begin to change you into his divine image. Rise up and declare his power to overcome. Death and life is in the power of the tongue, and the man's belly will be satisfied by the fruit thereof. You have to ask God to declare his power that you rise up and overcome every negative thing the enemy brought against you. Denounce, renounce every unclean spirit and walk in righteousness and truth of God's word and in victory. Now I'm going to read the prayer to the throne Jezebel with the end of chapter 4. The prayer to the throne Jezebel. And I pray this really opening your eyes and give you understanding. One point God spoke to me this week. Stop nursing and cursing and rehearsing your past failures. Stop nursing and cursing and rehearsing your past failures. The things people have done to you that scarred you, that hurt you. Let it go. Let it be under the blood because it's been cleansed and washed away. God says he's taking your sins and lawless deeds to remember no more as far as the east to the west. Let it be gone. We have to let the blood of Jesus cleanse us from the sins of the past, from every negative thing that people have done to hurt you and scar you in your heart. I have so much I can nurse, curse, and rehearse about the things from my past. But I refuse to give into that voice. I can continue to talk about how being married, I was broken and torn and then put out and deceived and manipulated and controlled. I can talk about many different things that can be done in my life. But what good is it going to do? It's not going to give you joy. It's not going to lift you. It's going to continue to be, be mindful of the damaging things people have done to you. So we have to let it go. Let it go, let it go, says the Spirit of God. Put it under the blood of Jesus. And let the Lord cleanse your mind and your heart from all the pains and scars from the past because beautiful are the scars that God has brought you through because he healed you, he delivered you, he set you free. Now is the time for you to repent. Tear down your idols and dethrone Satan from his seated position. Where? On the throne of your mind. It's time to dethrone him. Do you really want to be free? Do you want to dethrone him? Are you comfortable and complacent with Satan sitting this king on your throne? On your mind, your throne. 2 Corinthians 10 and 5. To cast down every imagination, every high thought that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, and bring into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. And when your obedience is fulfilled, then you can revenge all disobedience. You cannot revenge the disobedience in anybody else's life if you have not dealt with the disobedience in your own life. So we have to be willing to repent be delivered, be set free, and be healed. 
in order to dethrone the idols and dethrone Satan from taking control of your mind. So I want you to pray this prayer with me. You see it on the screen? Pray this prayer with me. Father God, I realize that I have allowed the evil powers that are behind Jezebel to affect my life. I am bound down to false image by not trusting in your word or believing that you are who you say you are. I have come into agreement with the lies of the devil. I have believed a lie concerning your divine nature. Forgive me for allowing perversion of your truth to direct my path. I also realize that I've been involved in religious performance as I attempt to gain your love and attention. Forgive me for not understanding the reasons for my actions and for not being sensitive to the time you desire intimacy. Lord, I repent of the areas of, I looked over this chapter, wherever you mark, dog ear, or note it in areas in which you know God is convicting you. Take the time to repent for every action of sin. So, Father, I believe your word, which states you are merciful, that it's your desire to take me for your inheritance. I repent of any involvement with idolatry and of of the involvements of my ancestors. I lay the ax to the root of any sin and false belief systems. Now, Lord, empower me with the spirit of your might to be as Gideon and tear down every false image I may have. I remain open to any other area you might show me concerning iniquitous patterns of believer, belief or behavior systems. Thank you for forgiving my sins and the sins of my ancestors. I declare that the enemy is not on the throne of my life. The one true God is the only one worthy of the throne. And I honor you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Now build an altar to the Lord. Through offering the sacrifice of praise, the word tells us, let us offer to God the sacrifice of thanksgiving with the fruit of our lips, giving him praise. If you receive this tonight, build an altar of praise, build a sanctuary where God's glory can inhabit your tabernacle to come in and fill your place with his presence. That you can feel God moving in your life like never before. Changing, plucking up, uprooting, tearing down things in your life that should not be there, even removing people out of your life that don't need to be in your life anymore, who you know are bad influences and are negative all the time, foul mouth, blasphemers. You need to cut them off. Allow the Holy Spirit to make you a vessel that's honored before God, a temple for the living God to dwell in. Spend some time reading through the Psalms, exalting His holy name, and praising Him for who He is. You need to make a choice tonight, a decision that I will, from this day forward, allow the Lord Jesus Christ to sit on my throne as king and be the Lord of my life. Because as I just read this prayer, believe this prayer, I receive this prayer, it's already done. Now all you have to do as a child of God is make a decision to move forward in God's righteousness and his holiness. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman need not to be ashamed, rightly divide the word of truth. Study, 
God approved you through his word. So you can walk worthy of the vocation, your calling. Where would you have been called? I pray you have been inspired from this word tonight, being rich in your spirit. Receive this word. Allow this word to marinate in your heart. Go back to my YouTube channel, Charles Embry's on the link. Go back to, to YouTube. Listen to this lesson again. Allow the Spirit of God to really minister to your heart. Even share with somebody you know that needs to hear this. I guarantee when you share this word, you're going to receive a blessing just because of the obedience of doing what God instructs you to do, to share this word with somebody else who needs to hear this word. Because there's a lot of people we know who are bound by Satan, controlled by the enemy, and are not moving forward to freedom. But you have the power to set them free by the word of God. Amen. So, Heavenly Father, tonight I thank you for this word, God. I pray to change lives, enrich those who are weak to become strong, those who are poor become rich in your presence, God, in wisdom, knowledge, understanding of the word of God, that they would know, understand, and recognize the spirit of the enemy when he comes into their lives to manipulate, control, and deceive them from walking in faith in your word. And so, God, that you cover their minds, cover their hearts, Cover all of our hearts tonight, God. Cover all of our minds. Keep us in your will and your plan, oh God, that we walk by faith and not by sight in the promises of your word. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen, 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 again, amen, hallelujah. Glory to God, glory to God. Next week we're going to talk about after Leah's reign, after Leah's reign in chapter 5. We're going to chapter 5. we got three more chapters left in this book. There's eight chapters in this book. But we're going into chapter 5 starting next week. The Lord said the same. As always, if you don't know Jesus Christ, your Lord and Savior, for the Bible says in John 3.16, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever shall believe in him should not perish, but should have everlasting life. You can have this life that we're talking about tonight by receiving God's word in your heart, in your spirit, knowing that Jesus died, was buried, and rose again for your sin, and in the next week, you can be born again. It's John 10, 9, I mean, not John, Romans chapter 10, verse 9 and 10. Glory to God. I'm going to read this on here because this is really something that needs to be said tonight. Glory to God. It says, Romans 9 and 10, that if thou shalt confess thy mouth, the Lord Jesus, believe in thy heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For the heart man believes unto righteousness, but the mouth's confession is made. For the scripture saith, whosoever believes on him shall not be ashamed. So you can receive the same Jesus in your heart as Lord and Savior who has the power over all the power of the enemy and can set you free from the inside out and bring you to salvation, deliverance through the power of the Holy Spirit by praying this simple prayer. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, ask the Lord to come into my heart, forgive me for my sins, known and unknown, and cleanse me from all unrighteousness. Come into my heart and be my Lord and Savior. And I thank you for saving me. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. If you prayed that prayer, you just got born again. You just got born again. And the angels in heaven are rejoicing over one sinner who made a decision to turn their lives over to Jesus Christ. Let him be the Lord and Savior of their lives. This has been a blessing you sow a seed into this ministry, if you will. Whatever God touched your heart to sow, sow a seed. Sow a seed into the ministry. And I guarantee God will add more blessings upon you. You can't beat God's giving. The more you give, the more he gives back to you. I'm not one to ask for offerings for each lesson, but I ask you to sow a seed. If God put in your heart to sow a seed, if you don't, still bless. You still be blessed. May God continue to reign blessed upon all of you because of your obedience to follow him. Amen. And I thank God for everyone that came on tonight. Pray you be enriched in your spirit continually to grow in grace. 
and the knowledge of who he is. Anyone have any questions before we go? Any questions? I see the comments on here tonight. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Anyone have any questions tonight? They'd like to share. I see the comments on here tonight. Thank you for your comment. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Denise. God bless you. You know, I really felt the Spirit of God on this lesson tonight because I, I know God is doing something tonight in us, and he's, he's really stripping the enemy to make us aware of his tactics. And we have to really pay attention and be discerning of those unclean spirits that try to enter to your house. Because people will bring spirits to your house and leave them as a dumping ground. You have to be careful what spirits you allow in your house. Do not many people come into my house at all. People in my building can tell you, I'm by myself a lot in my house. Only person really come over is the shine the most of the time. Well, if she doesn't come up, I'm by myself because I don't entertain unclean spirits. A lot of these people that are around in this building are not following Jesus Christ. They have an unclean spirit. And God told me to guard my heart. I can mingle with them. I can conversate with them. I can pray for them. But they need prayer. But I don't entertain a lot of stupidity. I don't entertain a lot of unclean spirits. Because I have to guard my heart. As a vessel of God, as a leader, you have to guard yourself. Guard your heart for how it flows to issues of life. You have the right to guard your heart. You have the right to protect your barrier. Because don't allow the enemy to cross your threshold. Because any unclean spirit can come in and throw you for a loop if you're not careful. So I encourage you tonight. Pray over your house. Anoint your house. Decree and declare the word of God in your house. Sanctify your atmosphere. And watch God move in your place. Every time somebody comes to my house, they say the same thing. Every individual don't even know each other says the same thing. My house is peaceful because I'm always praying in my house. I'm worshiping in my house. I keep God's presence in my house. I'm not perfect. I sin like anybody else, but I don't make excuses for sinning. So I know how to repent. But that's one thing God showed me during this lesson. We have to be real with ourselves. If you know you got a stronghold in your life, admit it. Stop trying to conceal that stronghold. Hide behind that stronghold because that stronghold would hinder you from receiving your blessing. There are many things God wants to do in our lives, but he cannot do it because we conceal our sin. If you mess up, just repent. Get back in right standing with God and right relationship. And allow the Holy Spirit to cleanse your heart from all sin and let you draw near to God with a heart full of faith, being washed clean from an evil conscience. And I guarantee you feel the freedom, you feel the liberty to offer to God the sacrifice of thanksgiving with the fruit of your lips, giving him praise. That's because of the joy that floods your heart from spending time in his presence. So you be encouraged tonight and stand fast in the liberty where Christ has made you free. May the Lord watch between me and thee while we absent one from another. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord turn his face towards you. May the Lord lift his countenance upon you. May the Lord give you peace. Until next week, the 6 o'clock hour, we will resume again with our lesson, breaking the three-fold demonic cord of Jezebel, how to the lies of Jezebel, Athaliah, and Delilah. Amen? So you stay encouraged tonight and know that God loves you, and I love you too with the love of the Lord. Amen? Have a great night, everybody.